I've lived stories that have proved your faithfulness. I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend. And there's beauty in what I can't understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. And I believe you're the wonder-working God. You're the wonder-working God. All the miracles I've seen, you're too good and I believe. The wonder working God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see. You're too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. I can't resurrect a man with my own. Just the mention of your name can erase the dead. Oh, all the glory to the only one who can. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you.
All the miracles I've seen You're too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe too good to not believe, too good to not believe. He's too good to not believe. He's too good to not believe in, right? And has he been good to you? He has been good. He's a good father. He takes care of us. He looks over you. He looks over me. And he just covers us. He's too good not to believe in him. God has a special word for us tonight. And I just want you to join me today. And we're going to talk about prayer. We're going to be talking about prayer. How much prayer is needed in our lives, especially now, 2023. I can't believe I'm even saying that. Prayer is needed in our lives every day. And I want to share a word with you today. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Daniel. And there's so many verses, but I can't read them all. Then they'll say it's an excuse for me not to preach, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. And let's look into Daniel 9. 19, 9, 19. And we'll read the word saying, O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God. For your city and your people are called by your name. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, listen and act. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for that powerful word. For what you have brought to me, Lord, I will share and bring to this church, Lord. I have received, Lord, and I pray that our hearts be sensitive to the voice of your spirit, Lord. Speak to us, Lord, this night, Lord, and operate in our hearts. May we receive that understanding and that word just fall into those places in our lives where we really need it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. You may take your seats tonight. Prayer. How about that? Just saying the word is powerful. Just saying it the right way is powerful. Prayer. Say it tonight. Prayer. Prayer. It's powerful. And with prayer, we can stand and say, not today, devil. Not today. Prayer. Prayer. Anybody gets those days where we wake up, at least I have woken up, and especially lately, crazy hours, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, 
and you wake up and you're, you're, you feel like you need to come before him. The Holy Spirit taking you to that moment and to that intercession. And I have been experiencing this in the last couple days, right? God revealing, working in different areas in my life. Awake, O sleeper, Proverbs 20. This is a warning to be alert to opportunities. When we listen to the voice of the Spirit, when we feel that, and I've, I've gotten up, and sometimes I'll just take my, my laptop, my Bible, and my husband will wake up and say, where are you going? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I can't, I can't have this conversation at 3 o'clock in the morning. Don't worry, I'm still in the house. I'm just going somewhere else. I need to find the Lord. I need to kneel. I need to pray. I need to cry. Don't worry, I'll be back in the morning. And you know what? The next day, my husband will tell me, okay, so what were you doing? Were you writing? I like to write too, and he knows that. And I'll say, no, don't you see that I have this red mark on my forehead and my face is swollen because I've cried all night long? It's that moment of intimacy with the Lord. And I enjoy it. Yes, I'll wake up swollen, but I've, I've, I, I have received a blessing from the Lord. Sometimes it's just that time of prayer. Sometimes it's that time for intercession. Sometimes it's that moment and it's the way we tell the devil, not today. Not today. Psalm 18 says, assures or assures us that our prayers reach the ears of God. He never ignores our requests or refuses to listen. David declared that God was his strength. He knew that God never got tired from, from listening to him, right? From receiving his, his praise and his words. He declared that God was his rock so David knew that he stood on solid ground. When you and I pray and we believe and we come before the Lord in faith, we are standing on solid ground. He declared that God was his fortress. So David knew that he was safe and he was secured in God's presence. The Bible makes it clear that God hears and answers our prayers. How many of us have received prayers that have been answered? Sometimes it's just a matter of coming before him and crying. I found myself doing this, waking up, going to another room, or even by my bed. I didn't want to disturb my husband. I, I knew that each one, God works in different ways, right, with each one. And just found myself in that profound intercession. In that moment of intense prayer. And crying. And sometimes I would say, why? What, what am I praying for? What am I praying for? What am I, why am I crying? Romans 8 says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with what God has for them. God will find the way to, to work in our lives. God is clear in what he does and what he, and what he speaks. Sometimes we just walk away while he's talking to us. See, we wake up, but we're like, oh, I'm not, I need to get to work tomorrow. 
I need that strength. I need that mindset. I need to be focused. And we kind of walk away from, what, from his calling. And sometimes it's during that quiet night where he can speak to us. Prayer. Not today, devil. Not today. I found myself in this intense, profound moment of prayer in my room one day. This was another day. It was during the daytime. I was studying. I have a corner in my room. I call it my war corner. <laughs> Not my war room. I don't have all the room for that, but I have that corner. And I spend hours a day. I will read. I will study. I will take a class. I will meditate. I will sing. That's my corner. And one day while I was studying... I just fell to tears. I was moved. And I put my head over my bed. And I just, I was sobbing. I found myself sobbing. And I was hungry for the Lord. I was hungry. And I, I didn't yell. I didn't talk loud. But my husband came in and gave me a word that refreshed my spirit. Because God will do that. You, you search him, and he'll provide. And that's exactly what he did. He spoke a word. I stayed quiet, and my spirit was refreshed. I said, okay. I got strength, got up, went for a stroll, got to the stores. A couple hours after, I received a text from my 12-year-old niece sending me a text about Ephesians 6. Be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Withstand evil. Stand strong. Woo! I said, thank you, Lord, because first I got refreshed with the word my husband gave me. You put it in his heart. He brought it to me. He delivered. I received it. Go out strengthened. Received another word by my 12-year-old niece. I was like, I'm blessed already. That day, my phone was ringing off the hook. It was blowing up. I have an aunt in Chicago. Lovable, precious aunt of mine. She's a woman of prayer and vision. And she was blowing up my phone. <laughs> she called me that day. She called me the next day. She called me the 31st. She called me the first. I couldn't get her call. I, went, I would run to the phone, and, and the call would go. And I was busy doing other things, got distracted, couldn't call her back. And I said, she knows I love her that much. She knows I'll get right back to her. Didn't do it till. On the first, she called me in the morning. I was at church. Called me in the afternoon. I was with family. She called me in the evening really late. Actually, it was really late. It was late for her, and it was later for me because I'm Eastern Standard Time right here in Georgia. And I'm like, I'm going to pick up this phone. I'm going I'm to take some time, and I'm going to sit down. I'm going to hear her. She's talking to me. She's like, like, I'm telling you, she's a woman of prayer. Like, she will stay hours praying. And she'll find the closet if she needs to get to the closet. She'll do it in her room. She'll do it any part of the house. She prays for hours. And she's like, yeah, you know what? I was praying for you. Like, I didn't know she was praying for me. Of course. Dee Dee Carmen, you pray all the time. She's like, I was praying for you. And I kept on, I felt something. I felt something. I said, tell me, tell me, tell me a little bit about that. She's like, God took me to this scripture, Daniel 9, 9 and 10. And she said, I don't know what you're going through, but stay strong. Stay strong. He's with you. I received that word, and I said, thank you, Lord. I spent some time speaking with her, and I dived, I, I dived right into this word right after that conversation. What she didn't know is that days before, I was sitting with my sister in a restaurant. We were sitting by the windows. 
a car crashed right into that wall. The windows didn't shatter. The wall crashed in, and not even a piece of ceiling fell over us. And then before that, I come out of church. It had rain. Streets were shiny, too shiny for me to even see the lines. I'm talking with my husband. I said, I'm going to stop at the market. I'm going to pick up some items. Okay, fine. I'm going to take this only. I start turning, and I'm like, Julio, this is weird. The, the arrows aren't, they're facing, they're not facing me. Like, I'm going across. And when I noticed I was running on the other side of the road, God with me. You know, sometimes it just takes these little things to notice. You know, maybe I shouldn't be driving at night. But these things to notice, the Lord is with me. He goes before me. He goes by me. He goes in back of me. He's just covering me up. Not today, devil. Not today. When you pray, you pray, and you bring your A game. You bring it all. You bring your, your concentration. You bring your focus. You bring your spirit. You bring your heart. You don't leave it all out. You come in, you bring your A game when you go before the Lord. How do you do prayer? In prayer, we must have faith and trust that God will hear and fulfill our prayers. Prayer may be expressed vocally, mentally. I mean, I have that corner and I do all kinds of prayers there. I do it with my, with my voice. I do it with my mind. I do it singing. I can't sing, but I, I try. I bring my A game right there when I'm in prayer. Tonight we read the book in the book of Daniel. This is a man, which is an example of a man that prays and he knows how to bring his A game. He says, not today, devil, not today. Not with my people and not with me. Daniel the intercessor, the man taken into captivity, the man that remains faithful, a man that interprets the dreams and receives visions. Daniel and his friends refused the food and wines from the king of Babylon to avoid becoming unclean. Daniel, a man that receives his wisdom from God, the appointed to a high authority, but his jealous rivals plan to destroy him. He's thrown into the lion's den. He's saved from the lion's den. His rivals are destroyed. Daniel was restored to his position, and now Daniel receives a series of visions, which he receives interpretation of. Although Daniel feels moved and troubled by these Daniel prays. He repents on behalf of the Jews and prays that Jerusalem be restored. Now I'm going to park it here for just a minute. Daniel 9 2 said that he understood by the books. Daniel built his prayer life. In the word, the belief, and convictions of God. There was going to be punishment. That there was iniquity and fall on behalf of the people. Daniel didn't take these visions lightly. And it was never soon enough for him to pray. Although he wasn't pertaining a priestly family, but he did know how to search the Lord. He knew how to pray. He was a government official. He might have had a super busy schedule, but he took time to pray. How many of us use that excuse? I'm busy. I'm tired. I've done it all. I've cleaned after everybody. I need some me time. And we forget that that me time should be, hey, Lord, here I am. This is my me time. 
He said, verse 3, he set his face towards the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. He made confession before the Lord. But he said, Lord, you're great. You're awesome. He praised him. He knew that he was praying to a God that was righteous. We have sinned, he says. He doesn't say they have sinned. Oh, forgive them. Forgive me. Forgive my people. Have We have sinned. The Bible says he set his face. Daniel was reaching God through prayer. This reflection of, of what he did is, is a resemblance of a humble heart in approaching God. Sometimes we just want to be too comfortable when we come before the Lord. We don't want to pay the price. We want to sit. Okay, if you can't make it to your knees, fine, sit. But pray bringing your A game. But sometimes it's just like short, sweet, Lord, answer all my requests before you. You know I don't have time. He made sure he would touch all bases. That verse 3 says, and I read it just now, I was talking about it. He says, then I set my face towards the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, ashes, and he prayed. He did not take that lightly either. In the Bible, people prayed on their knees. They bowed. They prayed on their faces. They prayed standing. You may pray with your eyes opened or closed, quietly or loudly, but whatever way you are most comfortable with and least distracted, bring that A game. Bring it all before the Lord. Get creative. Go simple or not. But do it from the heart. Now Daniel confessed the sin of his people and glorified the goodness of God. That chapter 9, that whole prayer. But if you read it, he'll start like, you're, you're glorious. He's just magnifying the Lord. You're righteous. You're great. And then he's asking for something. And then he'll stop front words. He's just, you're righteous, Lord. You know what you're doing. You're perfect. I know that we have failed. But Lord, save us. Lord, you're great. You're glorious. You're wonderful. You're perfect in all your ways. But Lord, have mercy over us. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Even the righteous may fall and may fail. Instead of Daniel complaining, he confessed. Sometimes we say, we're praying. What are you praying about? Oh, all of a sudden, Lord, Dad, if he doesn't do this, I'm not going to keep on working. I'm going to cross my hands. I'm going to sit aside. I don't want to talk with anybody. We start complaining instead of confessing. Lord, forgive me. You know what? I didn't do this right. I didn't bring my A game to the prayer today. I didn't come all in. Matthew 21 says, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Daniel 9 and Daniel's prayer, what we read, O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. You're perfect in all your ways. You deserve all honor and glory. You're big. Your majesty. You know what you're doing. We have sinned. You're righteous. We're not all righteous, no. But you know what? Forgive us, Lord. Listen, Lord. Act, Lord, for my people. Now, while Daniel was speaking, praying, and confessing, com having confession of sin, he was speaking in prayer. Gabriel, whom he had seen in vision, reached him 
And he informed him and talked with him and said, O oh, Daniel, in verse 23, 923, at the beginning of your supplications, the command was sent. See, when we pray and we bring our A game and we bring it all like we're supposed to and we don't leave anything out because we're interested in something else, we bring it all in before the Lord. By the time we open our mouth and start speaking, the Lord has already sent the command. Prayer, right? Not today, devil. Not today. You're not going to take my family. You're not going to bring down my household. You're not going to destroy my life. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to come before you. I'm going to confess my sins. And I'm going to know that you are righteous in all that you do. Psalm 114 says, oh, I do want to talk about Daniel 10 just a little bit here. A message was revealed to Daniel, yes. He understood the message and had understanding of the vision. But verse 2 on chapter 10. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks because of the vision, because of that revelation. He was afflicted. I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Daniel saw a vision. He was afflicted. He did something about it. Sometimes we like to take God's things a little bit light. You know what? Sometimes it's time for us to bring it all in. And say, me and my house are going to serve the Lord. Not today, devil. Not today. Sometimes we just have to bring it all in, bring our A game to that prayer night. Verse 10 says, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. Verse 11 says, and he said to Daniel, old Daniel, man greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to your. And while he was speaking this word to Daniel, he stood trembling. You see, the, the earth and our skin and our flesh trembles before his holy presence. In verse 12, 10, 12 says, do not fear for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. How do you do your prayer? Do you do it with faith? Do you do it with trust? Do you bring your A game to that prayer corner of yours? There's prayers, prayer examples throughout the Bible. We have an Esther. She gave orders. Don't eat, don't drink. Three days. We're going all in. We're going to defeat the enemy. Anna, or Hannah, a woman that mumbled and cried and spoke no loud words and God had already heard her and sent the command to save her. Moses, a man with a thousand excuses. I'm not eloquent. I can't speak. I can't talk. Guess what? I can't either. And I'm right here preaching this word today. How about that woman that broke that alabaster? Or like I like to say, el alabastro. Broke it right there. Right before Jesus. Sobbing. Crying. While the men present talked about her like she wasn't even there. They offended. They were offended by her presence. Because they saw sin. 
But did Jesus see that? Jesus saw that she was coming in prayer. That was her prayer. Her sobbing, her alabastro, her, 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 her drying his feet. You're righteous, Lord. I don't deserve this. You're righteous. I don't deserve this. You're righteous. I confess my sins have mercy. You're righteous. Be your forgiving God. How do you bring your prayer? Do you bring your A game? Do you have faith when you pray? Do you talk to the Lord like you really mean it? Prayer. And like Danny Goki says in one of his songs, this is how blind men get their sight. This is how dead men come to life. This is how small things multiply. This is how oceans have to part. This is how light cuts through the dark. And this is how I know who you are. When you pray with faith, when you bring it all in, and when you stand up before that trial and you say, not today, devil, not today. God bless you. spoken for tonight for the beginning of the year that's where our hearts need to be we need to be in prayer I know God's challenged my own heart to say you need to pray this way sometimes he gives you a specific word on how to bring your prayers to him sometimes we are too consumed with what we want whether than rather than what he wants we need to make our prayers kingdom prayers we need to make our walk kingdom walks Amen. Thank you so much, Sandra, for your word. What a timely message. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for this challenging word to bring us back to our knees because that's really where we stand in your kingdom. When we're on our knees, focused on you and your agenda and your needs and your desires and your purpose for our lives. God, and I pray that this would be a year, Lord, that we started out right. We started out with our knees in prayer 
in fasting, in focus on your kingdom and on what you desire, God. And I thank you for this word. And I pray, God, it would come alive in us, that we wouldn't just take it for tonight and it would be a great message, but, God, it would take it to our hearts and it would change us and change our lives. And we would, in turn, seek people who are desiring you, God, who need your word. And through our prayers, you can bring those faces to us and we will know who to speak to and who to witness to and who is primed right at that moment to hear a word about you and their lives be changed. I thank you and I honor you tonight, God. And I pray that you'd bless every person here. Lord, and we would leave this place, God, changed and be about your kingdom and be about prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you Sunday.